Welcome to another episode of Pixel Valve. In today's episode, I'm going to be walking you through the entire process of fitting and mounting a new, a brand new Pixel Valve mounting kit to the back of this amazing and classic Carl Zeiss Flectagon 35mm f2.4 lens. I actually have two of these from the late 70s to 80s. As you can see, this is the one with the white writing on the bezel, so I'm, I'm guessing this one might be a little bit later, probably in the 80s. But as usual, let's take the three back screws out of this to start with. It's a really easy procedure, there's not much to do really, it's quite quick. You're going to find this a lot easier than I am, because I'm actually doing this one-handed in most cases, which is why I've got the magnet there to pull out those screws. But I'm also behind the camera, and on the camera I'm using the other Flectagon, which is the, the one with the little red MC logo on the bezel. And I'll, I'll show you that later. But once we've taken these three screws out, the three main screws, there is another one to take out. Now there's five screws in total on the back of this lens, but we only want to remove one screw, and it's a very small screw. It's this one here. Right. And the way to remember which screw it is, is to notice the aperture pin here. And then it's the one furthest away. The furthest screw away from that remaining pin. So I'm going to change the head on that screwdriver now to a smaller set. And I'm going to stick the magnet back on, so bear with me a moment. And as you noticed, as you can probably see there, the back of the lens will actually come off with just those three screws uh, that have been removed. But we want to take the uh, this screw off because we don't want some of the parts inside coming off with it. We want to take just the back plate, nothing else. Although it will actually have a um, mechanism on the, on, on the underside of this. Uh, look how small that screw is. It's tiny. You know, this is this is why I love magnets. Imagine losing that. I like to keep these all together by putting them into a Ziploc bag, like the one that comes with the the actual Pixel Valve kit. So, notice the. Um, the aperture auto and manual switch there on the side of the lens. When you take the back off this lens, you'll you'll be able to remove this slide switch. It's no big deal really, um, it just comes off, but be aware that there is a ball bearing behind this. And the ball bearing is usually attached by a bit of grease onto the side of that uh, chassis. So it, it usually doesn't fall off, but just in case it does, be mindful of it. The um so the, the screw the the um the ball bearing fits into that little slot on the side of that switch, but it usually sits here in this little hole. And it seems to be kind of glued in with a bit of grease, old grease. Right, so this is the interesting bit. You, you might notice now that when you turn the iris, the aperture wheel, you'll find that nothing happens. But don't be alarmed. That's normal. That's fine. It's because of this. On the back of the lens, your aperture pin controls this thing, which in turn moves this lever here. Now if I move it, you'll see that the blades move too. Now, the next step is to actually put a clip over this with uh, well, that comes in the, the kit, it comes in the bag, and there it is. There's the clip. It's a tiny little plastic clip that's been specially designed to fit over this arm and hold it down into position for you. It's very similar to the Carl Zeiss 135 lens, this actually, but instead of a circlip, we're using this clip. Now, 
don't drop it on the floor don't stand on it because it is just plastic it could break if that does happen I'll always send you a new one so don't worry too much but you know it's something to uh, bear, mind for the, bear in mind for the future so this can be a little bit tricky it's a two handed job with one hand hold the uh, lens in one hand and with the other hand you may need to use more than a few fingers for this it can be fiddly it's more difficult for me behind the camera because I'm also doing that uh, but you need to look for the little shoe there's like a little side on this that, that looks a little bit like the bottom of a shoe a little bit curved and that curvature sits on the throat of the lens like this and just balance it there and click it on and that's it that's really all you need to do so while you're holding that that arm down click it on and of course test it as soon as you've done it to make sure everything works fine and uh, if it if it moves and if it does you're good to go the um the clip is specially designed so that it doesn't interfere with anything else inside this lens. It has clearance against uh, clearance away from that uh, spring and the screw, so it, it's a uh, it's a it's a very unobtrusive design, and it, it should um, have no effect on the internal mechanism of the camera uh, or lens. So. If you want to remove this and revert back to the M42 at any point, all you need to do is simply pick that off and reverse the procedure. Now for the third step. We want to replace the, the back plate with this new one. And to do this, the easy way to do this is to look for the notch, the little mark on the side of the back plate and it's just a simple case of lining it up to the red mark on the lens and that gives you roughly an idea of where it's supposed to be but to do this you're going to need to put the lens down on a on a table and then line up the the screws to the holes so the screws that come with this uh, kit has a hex attachment so you'll need to change your screwdriver over to the hex bolt or as we say in the UK Allen key it's quite a small one um, but uh, they're so readily available you could you probably already have one and I like to think of this like a car wheel so I don't know if you've ever t changed the tire on a car changed the wheel um, instead of tightening one side one screw one screw or one nut up at a time uh, you actually tighten them up so that they're not so tight that just loosely tighten them up first and work your way around and then go back and finish off tightening them after um, I'm, I'm one-handed here so it's going to be a little bit tricky for me but it, it's going to be a lot easier for you And we're nearly done. We're pretty much done. Once you're finished, once you've done this, check the lens to see if everything works okay. Move the blades, move the focus wheel, and if everything clicks nicely, if everyone everything feels okay, then it is okay. So I'm going to uh, take the DSLR off the tripod right now in, in a moment um, you've probably noticed the lettering on the side of this actually on the side of the lens all that means is it helps me reference which lens adapter you're going to get so for example that says F35 Flectagon 35mm and B for black and uh, MC for multi coated it just helps me reference the parts so I've taken the lens off the, the, the I've taken the, the, the camera off the tripod and I'm filming on my mobile phone now. 
So I'm going to make sure all those parts go back in this bag, including the, the, the original plate. And this is the lens we've just converted. This is the one we've been working on. So I've never used this one before, so it'll be interesting. And this is the one that's on the camera. This is the other Flectagon. I actually use this pretty much all the time on this camera right now. It's uh, it's a really nice lens. And you'd expect it to be a nice lens, wouldn't you? So I'm going to twist that off. As you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same. It's the, it's, it is exactly the same, in actual fact. Um, I'm not sure what the difference between these two lenses are. Um, so, in the usual way, line up the mark to the white dot and wait for the click. Once it's on the camera, I'm going to stick this back on the tripod and we're going to have a look to see what, what it looks like. And here it is. I can't see much difference. It looks exactly the same as the other one, doesn't it? Um, I'll need to in investigate further. But if you know, if you know the difference between these two lenses, I suspect, I think that the, the one I've got on there now is slightly newer than this uh, this one here. I think this one is a 1970s, a late 70s lens. But I don't know if there's any actual visually difference uh different uh, things about this i don't know if i don't know if there's any any difference really in the quality of the picture or the coatings in the lens so if you have any idea um let me know as you can see i've put all this in the bag and i'm going to put some masking tape on the bag and label it flectagon so that i know i know that when i come back in five or ten years that if i need to remove it and and put the m42 back on there i can always do so it's a really nice crisp little little adapter that it's a, it, it'll it'll last you a long time so if you like that video like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like it and um while i was here i thought i'd stick this in just as a little bonus i was videoing i was i was videoing the um the uh the thumbnail i was making a thumbnail for the youtube video so I set up the uh, tripod outside on a nice day and um, I thought I thought I'd run a video as well because you know it was done on the Carl Zeiss 135 this and it's a fantastic lens it's it's really crisp it's really sharp it's a stunning lens of course it's using the pixel valve adapter as well and it's on the same Nikon camera it's uh, stunning I, ju I just feel really really lucky to have Zeiss glass on my low end Nikon <laughs> but it's um it's classic stuff anyway if you liked that video and you want to see some more like and subscribe and um if you have any info or anything you can add stick them in in the uh, comments and I'll I'll try to reply to every one of you so, thanks for watching.